All right. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Tali. I'm from our education department, uh, and I'm really excited to share a little bit of my morning with you. Um, so today, we're going to be doing some exploring today. We are going to be exploring two different habitats um, in our ocean today. Um, now, if you have any questions uh, during our program today, you are welcome to ask questions. We encourage it. Uh, to do that, uh, you are welcome to text in your question. So we're going to get a phone number up on my screen in just a moment. There it is. Um, you're welcome to text in at this number here, 562-286-1838. Uh, if you have any questions during our program, if you see something that makes you go, hmm, I want to know a little bit more about that, you are welcome to text in those questions. If you're watching this program a little bit later, uh, when we are not live, you're still welcome to ask questions. We just ask that you email us instead. And that email address is down below there as well, live at LB aop.org so those are two ways to interact with us depending on where you are excuse me i should say when uh, you are watching uh, our program this uh morning so uh let's try to figure out first off what is a habitat this guy's kind of a big word really early in the morning hmm Ooh, i can't figure out we can do that <laughs> Ta-da! that's how you spell it if you're wondering how do we spell habitat habitat is a really fancy way to say it is a home for an animal. So we're going to be exploring two different habitats this morning. And we're actually going to start off with the one that is behind me here. Um, I do have a team member helping me out today. I have Miss Tiffany, uh, who is controlling all of the magic that is behind me. She's also going to be helping pass on your questions to me during our program as well. Whoa! <laughs> Our, uh, our giant sea bass knows where the camera is, so sometimes he, he likes to say hi to it. Oh my goodness, that startled me. But let's start off by uh, kind of waking up our brains a little bit. And let's start off by making some observations about this habitat. And observations basically means we're going to be learning by looking. So we're going to see what do we notice about our habitat behind me. Does anything stand out to you? Does anything surprise you? What do you see in this home for some of our animals here at the aquarium. This is actually a webcam of one of our exhibits that I'm using as an example of a kelp forest today. Um, so I'm gonna get out of the way so you can see more exhibit. And let's see what we notice about this kelp forest here. Hmm. I notice a couple things. I certainly notice there is a big, big fish coming towards the camera. And that is our giant sea bass. We have, oh, there's my other one. There's my third one. That actually was beautiful. I was about to say there's three of them. And they all showed up. Awesome. So those are definitely some of our big friends uh, here in the kelp forest. I noticed, though, that a lot of our fish kind of um, not the brightest of colors. I would say maybe they're neutral colors. Hello, Mr. Giant Sea Bass. How are you? Um, there's a lot of grays. There's a lot of kind of whites and creams and browns and some black as well. But I think that might be a good thing in our kelp forest here because I'm also noticing that the background has a lot of those same colors as well. There are some big rocks in our exhibit. There's a big kind of rock wall behind. So that probably helps the fish. Ooh, there's our shark going there too, our leopard shark. Awesome. Um, that probably helps our fish blend into their home. So it's probably good that they are those colors. Very cool. I also notice, and maybe you notice this too, that there are some small fish and some big fish. And there's also some things in here that are not animals as well, besides the rocks. There's also all this green stuff here. And those are examples of kelp.
Excuse me, friends. I'm going to adjust my microphone real quick. So let's take a moment. If we're looking at a kelp force, we should probably also figure out what kelp is. So let's take a closer look at some of this green stuff here. Maybe we can figure out a little bit more about, ooh, about what is kelp. This is kind of what it looks like when it is in the ocean. Um, and again, if you have any questions during our program today, you are welcome to text in those questions, that number on your screen. Uh, so this is what it looks like when it's floating in the ocean. You can see the motion of the ocean and all the beautiful sunlight coming down as well. So kelp is um, an algae and an algae is uh, basically means you're kind of like a plant but you're a little simpler than a plant so in the bottom they don't have roots like a flower does or a tree does they instead have something that acts more like an anchor it's just kind of sticking the kelp into the ground that's underneath that and that's called the hold fast because it holds fast it sticks on to the rock or the ground that's underneath it and the kelp is going to grow all the way up from that all the way to the surface. So just like a flower um, or a plant, they are going to be getting their energy from the sunlight. They use photosynthesis to get their food instead of consuming food like you and me. Um, and what's neat about kelp is it grows very, very quickly. It can grow two feet in a day in the right conditions. Can you imagine that? That's a lot, two feet. So if, can you imagine if you were a baby and then the next day you woke up and you were the size of a toddler. And the next day you woke up and you were the size of a little kid. And the next day you woke up and you were the size of your mom and dad. And the next day you woke up and you were the size of like a basketball player. And you kept going from that. And you're like, oh my goodness, I am three days old and I am very, 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 very tall. So that's what kelp does uh, when the conditions are right. It actually grows taller than the water is high. It actually flops over on its side and then it keeps growing horizontally uh, like that. So it can grow an amazing amount in a very, very short amount of time. Um, now, it is also a great home for a lot of different animals. It kind of has layers to it, a little bit like a rainforest does. So the top, um, where the sunlight is, gets very, very thick with all those overlaying um, blades of kelp, which is kind of like their leaves. Um, and it's a great hiding spot for young fish, for teeny, 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 tiny fish. The middle, you can see, is a little bit more open. So that's great for some bigger fish to hang out as well. Even seals and sea lions like to kind of play, ooh, like to play in sort of the middle part of the kelp. Um, it kind of looks like they're using it as an obstacle course in this uh, clip here, which is pretty fun. Uh, and then the bottom is a great home for a lot of different animals as well. Even that hold fast, that sort of anchor that kelp has on the bottom, it has all sorts of little nooks and crannies. So you can have just hundreds of little teeny tiny invertebrates, things like worms and crabs and snails, just living in the bottom portion of that kelp. So yeah, it is a very cool home for a lot of different animals. Now, I wanna take a moment uh, to talk a little bit more about some of our animals. I'm actually thinking of a very fuzzy animal that calls the kelp forest their home. Our sea lions are pretty cute, but this one is even cuter. Don't, don't tell them. But, ta-da! Have we seen, oop, I'm gonna get good at my backwards pointing. Have we seen this friend before? This is a sea otter. It's so adorable, oh my goodness. Um, so a sea otter is a friend uh, that lives in the kelp forest. Um, and they actually play a really important role in the kelp forest um, by uh, eating some very particular food. So otters eat a lot of food. They don't have blubber like our sea lions do or whales to keep them warm. They have this nice thick fur coat to keep them warm. Um, it is up to a million hairs per square inch. It is very, very thick. It keeps them nice and toasty, especially when they're in some pretty cold water. Um, and not only is that fur keeping them warm, they're also eating a lot of food and that's kind of warming up their bodies on the inside. So otters can eat a quarter of their body weight every single day. And to put that in perspective, what that means is if I weighed about 100 pounds, um, I would have to eat 100 
quarter pounder hamburgers every single day. That's a lot of food. So yeah, I could definitely not keep up with our otter friends. So they eat a lot of food to help them keep warm. Um, and as they're growing up, they kind of figure out what their favorite foods are. They realize I am the best clam catcher. I am the best snail catcher. I am the best urchin catcher. And they start specializing a little bit in what they like to eat. Um, they also, you can see they're floating on their back. They're good at kind of with holding things with their hands or their paws. Um, they also use tools to help them out because a lot of things that they like to eat are things that are in hard shells like those crabs and clams. Um, and they will go down to the bottom, grab their favorite rock, put it in their pocket. They do not have a pocket like I have on my jacket or we have in jeans. They actually have armpit pockets, which are kind of weird, but kind of awesome. So they have some loose skin uh, by their armpit uh, and they will put their favorite rock in there, put their yummy snacks in there, kind of hold it tight, just like if you were kind of holding shells in your shirt at the beach. They'll go back to the top, float on their back, and then use that favorite rock to, to break open that clam or crab to eat all the yummy meat inside. Kind of like we do if you've ever ordered some fancy seafood. Ah, this is kind of doing it with a ball here. Sometimes we'll give them little food puzzles, and that kind of mimics that sort of um, puzzle of trying to get the meat that's inside something that's a little harder there. So otters, very, very cool friends here in our um, aquarium here. Ah, and then this is one of their favorite, favorite foods to eat. Uh, this is a sea urchin, but do you notice what the sea urchin is on? Have we? I'm not good at my backwards pointing today. <laughs> We've seen this before, right? This is a blade of kelp. So the urchin's favorite food is seaweed, is kelp. They especially love to eat the bottom of kelp. Remember we said the bottom is the part that kind of sticks it on to the rocks. So if the urchin just mows right through that, all the rest of that kelp is gonna float away and it's not gonna provide a home for all the animals that need it. So what otters do is they help keep the sea urchin population in balance and make sure there's not too many of them there's not too little of them, and that in turn keeps our kelp for us nice and healthy. So otters who love to eat sea urchins, you can actually tell which ones prefer sea urchins because their teeth turn purple. Oh my goodness. Have you ever eaten a popsicle and your lips turn blue or your tongue turns blue and your mom's like, ooh, I know what you've been having for a snack. That's kind of what happens uh, with our otter friends as well. So their teeth turn purple if they eat a whole lot of urchins. But again, that keeps our kelp for us nice and healthy. Um, oh, I've never seen this picture before. Look at their pearly whites. Oh my goodness. So otters actually have a pretty good set of chompers there. They actually have molars like we do as well, and that helps them chew their food. So yeah, they are a very fun friend who lives in our kelp forest. And again, play that really important role to help keep it nice and healthy uh, by eating some friends like our sea urchins. All right, my friends, I think we've had a good time exploring uh, our kelp forest, which is actually a local habitat that we have, or at least off our coast here in California. Um, I want to go on a little bit of a, a vacation because our water here is actually pretty cold. It's already kind of a cold day. I don't know if it's cold where you are, but it is a windy day uh, where we are here in Long Beach. So I want to go somewhere a little bit warmer and uh, I want to explore one of our tropical areas that we have here at the Aquarium. Ooh, this is really cool. The water's nice and warm too, so I'm kind of happy to be in some warmer weather right now. So just like before, we're going to take a moment to make some observations. We're going to see what do we notice about our exhibit that is behind me. Is it different than the kelp forest we saw earlier? How so? Hmm. All right, I'm going to get out of the way so you can see our beautiful coral reef here. And let's see what we notice about this new habitat, this new home for our animals. Ooh, there's a really colorful fish zipping across our screen there. It had pinks and greens and purples. I knew, there it goes again. That is like a rainbow fish if I ever did see one. Very cool. I know this, we still have some kind of rocky structures here. 
I think somebody just bumped the camera. That was funny. Um, but I also notice it's a lot more colorful, not just the fish, but the surroundings as well. So I notice that our coral is a bunch of different colors. These kind of, there's two in the middle there that kind of look like fans. There's some lumpy ones or ones that kind of look like the branches of trees. And our fish are really colorful as well. Ooh, there's a red tooth trigger fish going to my left over there. He has little red vampire teeth. He's pretty cool. Uh, but again, that would be a good thing. So just like the kelp forest, our fish are colors that help them sort of blend in to their home. Hello, Mr. Parrotfish. There it goes. So that that way they don't stand, even though they are super duper rainbow colorful, they're actually still blending into their home because their home is super colorful as well. Very cool. So I hope you noticed some pretty awesome things about our coral reef here. And coral is kind of all these little things that are not so little, but these little structures that are behind me here. Goodness. Now, just like we did with our kelp forest, I think if we're going to be looking at a coral reef, we should probably figure out what is coral? What do you think it is? Is it a rock? Is it a plant? Is it an animal? Hmm. Let's see. And again, if you have any questions, you are welcome to text those questions in. Uh, we have that number up here on the screen, 562-286-18. Three, eight, um, or you are welcome to, again, email those if you're watching this later when we are not live this morning as well. So let's take a closer look at coral. I noticed there are definitely some fish hanging out in all the little nooks and crannies of coral. But I wonder if maybe we can take an even closer look at the coral. And maybe that'll give a little, a little better idea of what type of thing it is. Ooh, okay, so Miss Tiffany zoomed us in, and this is what coral looks like if you zoom in really, really close to the, hmm? Uh, not just yet, yeah, um, we'll get closer in just a moment. So, does this remind you of anything? Have you seen, if you look at just one there, have you seen something like that before? It has kind of a little tube for a body and lots of little frilly tentacles? at the top. Hmm. This kind of reminds me of sea anemones that I see uh, in their kite pools. And there's actually tropical ones as well. If you think about clownfish, they like to tuck into their home of a sea anemone as well. So they're actually related to each other, uh, corals and anemones. So coral is actually an animal. I know it doesn't look like an animal at first. You kind of have to go look a little bit closer to see it, but it is an animal living inside kind of a structure that it makes for itself. So I like to think of when I'm looking at a piece of coral, I'm not just looking at one animal. I'm looking at lots and lots and lots and lots of little animals all together. So I like to think of it as kind of an apartment building. And then each little, um, each little kind of stalk here, each little polyp of the coral lives in a little apartment in the apartment building that they actually make themselves. They secrete this hard structure that sort of, or this, this um, substance that kind of hardens around them to give the coral their different structures. Now, I need to tell you that the coral is not alone. The coral actually lives with a little roommate in its tissue. Um, and I'm wondering if we can zoom in a little bit more, oh my goodness, to see it. So if we zoomed in even closer to coral, this is kind of what we'd see. So we're still kind of seeing a little bit of what we saw before. We're still seeing these little polyps, these little things that look like teeny tiny little sea anemones all over the place. But do you notice in their tissue, in their kind of skin, all these little polka dots here, these sort of little brown dots there and 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 there. Those are the coral's roommate. Now the coral's roommate has a very long, fancy name. I think it's funny that something so, so tiny has such a long, 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 long name. Um, so inside the coral um, lives a little algae. Now we heard that word before. That's again, kind of like a plant, but
but a little bit simpler. It lives a little algae called zooxanthellae. Ooh, great. That is how you spell that very, very, very long word. Zooxanthellae is the little roommate that lives with coral. Now, um, they actually have a really important role to play because they kind of work together as a team. So the zooxanthellae um, provides food or sugar for the coral to eat. And then the coral polyp um, provides a little home for the algae to live. Now we noticed uh, in our exhibit that the corals were different colors, right? We saw some red coral, some blue coral, etc., etc., etc. That is thanks also in part to the little zooxanthellae that live in the coral polyps. Different types of zooxanthellae live in different corals, and that's how you get different coral, different colors of corals. I think that's super duper cool. I didn't know that before. So, ta-da! That's how we get different colors of corals is thanks to their little roommate here. That's pretty cool. Now, I want to we have a little bit more time uh, before we say goodbye. So I want to take a moment to talk about some of the really cool animals that live in our coral reef. And I actually want to focus on, first off, on one of the animals we saw before, and it's a fish with a very special mouth um, called a parrotfish. We have a couple different types of parrotfish ah, hanging out. But this is the one we saw before that I thought looked very rainbow. This is what it looks like when it's not, uh, not going on a swim as much. Um, but this is a type of animal called a parrotfish. Now, I agree that it is very colorful like a parrot. There's definitely lots and lots of rainbow going on. Um, but another thing that parrots are known for, besides having feathers, my fish friend does not have feathers, uh, but they have a very special mouth, right, as well. Birds, one of the things that makes a bird a bird is their beak. Whoa! And this is what the parrot's fish mouth looks like. So they have a little bit of a beak, kind of like a bird does. Um, so what they use this very special mouth for is they actually eat coral. Oh my goodness. Now you might say, wait a minute, isn't that bad for the coral? But again, just like the otter before, they help keep corals in balance. So they will actually make room for new corals to grow as they are grazing around and munching on some coral. Now they're not eating the hard, the hard house that the coral lives in. They're trying to get all the little munchy little polyps inside. But the other fun thing about the parrotfish. I hope I can share something kind of cool but kind of gross with you this morning. I know it's kind of early, but um, when they are munching on the coral polyps, they are also getting a little bit of that house um, in them. It's hard. They're not going to digest it. So uh, they are going to have it come out the other end uh, as sand. So if you've ever been to a nice tropical uh, white sandy beach, a lot of that is very finely ground up coral. And you can, in part, thank parrotfish for providing a little bit of that ground-up coral for those nice tropical sandy beaches. So I think it's very cool that one of the other things that parrots do, parrots, excuse me, parrotfish do, um, is besides helping keep coral reefs nice and healthy, they also help provide a little bit of sand for that area, which is kind of cool, but just a little gross. But that's okay. Um, so a parrotfish is a very fun friend that lives in our coral reefs. Uh, I do want to talk about one more fish that lives in the corals. Uh, and this one is actually a shark um, who might not live up to its name. I'm wondering if, Miss Tiffany, we can look at uh, a zebra shark. Ooh, very cool. Ta-da! This is what a zebra shark looks like when it is a grown-up. Now, most times when I say, look, ta-da! It's a zebra shark. Um, a lot of my friends look at me funny and they're like, um, Talia, I don't know if you know this. I don't, I, I don't know. But, um, zebras, zebras don't have polka dots. I'm, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but, uh, zebras have stripes on them. So why are you calling this clearly very polka dotty dotty animal a zebra shark? Um, now they are named a little bit more after what they look like when they are babies. So I'm wondering if we could take a glimpse of what a baby zebra shark looks like. 
Ah, this is kind of a teenager zebra shark. Um, so when zebra sharks are born, they have black and white stripes like a zebra. But as they get older, and this is kind of what happened after scientists were like, aha, it is a zebra shark. Um, all those stripes stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and kind of broke apart and became a whole bunch of polka dots. And we're like, oh man, um, that's okay. We also already have a leopard shark here in California. So uh, we couldn't call two sharks the same thing. That would be really confusing. If I said, go feed the, lebr the blah, 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 blah. go feed the zebra, uh, the, um, the leopard shark, which is what uh, they call my previous shark in Australia. If I said, go feed a leopard shark, and we didn't know if you meant this one or the tropical one, that might get confusing. So we instead call it a zebra shark after what it looks like when it born. Um, they do have black shark, a little bit like a zebra. Um, I like to talk about the shark as well because it's a little bit of a, an unusual shark shape. A lot of times when you think about shark, we think about kind of a big kind of football shaped shark. This one is a little bit flatter um, on the bottom here. And that's because it actually likes to take it on the bottom as well. So it's good that it's not quite as, as rotund. Actually, I'll keep on the screen because this picture is in the corner. Um, it's not quite as rotund as some of our other sharks on uh, on their underside there. So it can take a nap on the bottom. You can see their gills working over there. There's this little spiracle there that helps them breathe in and out when they're resting still. And then their little mouth is right there. So they have also very different teeth than a lot of different sharks as well. They're kind of not quite sharp, but not quite um, not quite flat as well, because they like to eat lots of fun things that live in the sand, um, like crabs and clams and snails and stuff like that. So they are very fun, uh, tropical friend uh, that lives in our coral reef. Very cool. And again, if you have any last minute questions, we have a couple more moments before we say goodbye. You're welcome. Again, the text us in 562-286-1838. Yeah, a parrotfish is another fun friend uh, that we live, that, um, excuse me, we talked about parrotfish. Uh, we talked about our zebra shark as well. I need to remember what fish I'm talking about. Um, and uh, zebra shark is another fun friend that lives in our coral reefs. Very cool. Um, so I think we have time to talk about maybe really quickly about one more tropical friend. I wonder if Miss Tiffany can surprise me. I put up, ooh, Miss Tiffany's like, ooh, challenge accepted. So let's see what other tropical friend we can talk about because we have a few more. Ooh, nice. I like this one. All right. So turtles are another front friend that we can find in a lot of our warmer waters um, around the world. So what do we know about turtles? Hmm. When I think about turtles, I think a lot of times about their hard shell doo, 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 that they have on their back. And that helps uh, protect them uh, as they kind of cruise through life. They have some really cool flippers that they like to swim with. And the other thing I think about when I think about turtles um, is I think about when they're babies. So turtles actually go on this amazing journey. They remember the beach that they were born on. Isn't that cool? They remember the beach that they were born on. And they will return to that beach on a nice swim there using those flippers there. Oh, hello, Mr. Zebra Shark. Um, they will um, return to the beach that they were born on. We have a lot of tropical friends in here. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, ah, there they are. This is our, one of ours at the um, aquarium here. They were getting some lunch, it looked like, because one of our, uh, aha, one of our aquarists, Put a little um, a little target in um, to munch on some food. So they like to eat a lot of soft things. I believe, if I remember correctly, they like to um, kind of shift from more plant food when they're younger um, to more squishy things when they're older. So they like to eat things like sponges and sea jellies uh, when they're a little bit more grown up. Um, so yeah, they like to eat a lot of fun food as well. And there's a great example of their beautiful shell on their back. So they go on a big journey to the beach where they were uh, born at. Uh, the moms will lay a whole bunch of eggs in the sand. Um, and then uh, the little baby 
um, will hatch out of the egg, crawl across the beach, and then go on their own little adventure. Um, and when they are all grown up, again, return to the same beach that they were born at. So a turtle is another fun friend that lives in some of our tropical waters. Very cool. All right, my friends. We are just about out of time, so I want to thank you so much uh, for spending a little bit of your morning with me. I hope you had fun learning about our two different habitats this morning. Uh, we learned about our kelp forest um, and that it grows very quickly. Um, and it's a great home for a lot of different animals. Again, it has layers just like a rainforest does. We learned about the otter, who's a super fun, fuzzy friend uh, who calls the kelp forest their home and how it helps the kelp forest. Uh, by eating one of its favorite food, the sea urchins, who likes to eat the bottom of kelp. Uh, and then we learned all about our corals uh, as well. We learned about what is a coral. It is an animal that has a plant for a roommate. Um, and we learned about the parrotfish, the zebra shark, and even some turtles. So I hope you had some fun uh, joining us this morning. Um, now, before we say goodbye, I do want to say that, um, again, if you have any more questions, um, now that we're going to go off the air, you're welcome to email in those questions. So again, that mm, email address is right down below there. It's live at lbaop.org. Um, you're welcome to email us any questions if you do have any uh, watching this a little bit later on. So again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, and I'll see you next time. We do have another program coming up in about half an hour at 10 o'clock about sharks. So you're, you're welcome to check that out as well. But again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye everybody.